、えーまあ、3月末から広島からのミッションのトリップっていうかねあの始まりまして、まあ、そこでいろいろカンファレンスというかを開きながらこうちょっと日本を回っていますで広島からスタートしてこの前は大阪に行ってで先日まだその京都ギャザリングに、まあ、そ参加して今こちらにあのご縁があって来させていただいたという形になっています、えー、まずあの、まえー、真ん中のロバート・ウィルキンソンえー、と、えー、とこちらのパ,パティ・ビルキンソン、こちら夫婦のアメリカから来た2人になります。<笑>こちらの2人はあの自分の夫婦でミニストリーをされておりまして、特にそれあの精霊の賜物っというところについて、えーまあ、教えあのティーチングですかね、教えたり、えー、しております。で、隣の,あのフレドリックがウガンダから来,た来ましたあの、フレドリックです。<笑>えー、あのフレデリックはあのウガンダであの牧師をしておりまして、えーまあ、昔自分も孤児だったんですけども、まあ、今400人ぐらいの孤児をあのケアしている、まあ、ミニストリーを持ったりですね、まあ、あのイスラム教のそのとこに行って、まあ、選挙をしたりというふうな感じで力強く活動されていますでこちらの、えー、彼はインドから来たアシーシュ彼はあのインドおよびあの山があるネパールとの境にデリーで住んでるんですけども、まあ、そこで1000人とか2000人とかそういう集会を持っている導いているような方ですで、まあ、いろんなあの面白い日本とも同じこう偶像とかもたくさんあるのですごく日本の文化とこう似てる部分もあってすごくいろんな面白いユニークな証を持ったりですねすごくあの私たちとこう。日本語も結構できるんで、あのごそっとなんか<笑>あのなんでしょう、あなんかそうあうんうんってうなずくようなこう証とかすごくいろいろ持ってますので、あの癒しとかすごいびっくりするような証とかも持ってます。まあいろいろネパール、えー、インドでいろんな道引きをされております。はいこのようになります。Uh, please introduce yourself and I interpret. Please introduce myself. Yeah. Ah.、Uh, Introduce yourself and then just、uh, give a short message or whatever you want. Just share your testimony、okay. or just. Okay, short testimony. Yeah, short testimony or just、right. short message or something. Thank you. Okay.、Um, thank you for having us here and honoring us with your presence. God blesses us richly as we travel and minister to His people. あのまあ、日本に来てこういろいろあの旅をする中でもう神様毎回あの祝福を与えてくださいます。He always provides everything for us. あの神様は必要なものを私たちに常に与えてくださいます。And I want to share something about Jesus Christ the night that they took him、um, to be crucified. まあイエスキリストのまあその十字架のことについてちょっと簡単にお話ししたいと思います。So、um, in in the chapter of John, I want to read a couple verses. John? Yes, John. Yohane no shoka, just a special, yes, I'm sure you're still on the shaggy. Yohane no queen. Yohane no queen. I know you're going to get to the Kantana and Makashi to pass, and short message. I know you might want to roll out to go on the main issue. In John chapter fourteen, in verse twenty six. えー、ヨハネの福音書の、えーあ 14, うん、14章の、えーにえー、25節。14章の26節を、えー、皆さんちょっと見てください。しかし、弁護者、すなわち父が、あ私は新教徒だったと思いますので。すみません。<笑>ね、14章の26節ですね。ですかねじゃあ私ちょっと読みますね。しかし弁護者すなわち父が私の名によってお使わしになる精霊があなた方に全てのことを教え私が話したことをことごとく思い起こさせてください。まあ、この,、まあ、あの状況としては、まさに今イエス,イエス様がまあ手に登ろうとして、まあ、その弁護者を送,ろうっていう送るというような約束をしていることです。
まあ、その後、まあ、あの弟子たちを連れて、まあ、あの園の方に向かいますその時、まあ、ぶどうの木の例えを説明してどのように、まあ、そのこれから私があのイエス様が去った後にどう,しどのように生きているかっていうのをこう説明していきました。And in John 15 and in verse 26, in the next chapter, 15章の26節ですね。He says this to them again. Go ahead and read it. 私が父のもとからあなた方に使わそうとしている弁護者、すなわち父のもとから出る真理の例が来るとき、その方が私について証しをなさるはずである。So the comforter, he's still talking, the comforter is going to come. The comforter is going to come when I go away. でまたこの 15, 15章でもイエス様はあのまた繰り返してまたこのあの弁護者あのが来るということを強調しています。So in John 16, ヨハネの16章ですね。And in verse 13, he tells them again. えまた16章の,この13節でもえ同じように言っています。しかし、その方、すなわち真理の霊が来ると。あなた方を導いて真理をことごとく悟らせるその方は自分から語るのではなく聞いたことを語りまたこれから起こることをあなた方に告げるからであると、so Spirit, really、まあこの十字架がかかる前にこの家あの聖霊この弁護者が来るっていうのはすごくこう、まあ、強調すごく重要なことなのでこイエス様は強調して何度も言われました And we know then 50 days later, 40 days later, he was going to ascend to heaven. And the very last thing he said to them before he ascended to heaven is in Acts chapter 1 and in verse 8. まあ、イエスは本当に天に上がるその直前のラスト、最後のメッセージですね。それを最後のメッセージが、あなた方の上に精霊が下ると、あなた方は力を受ける。そしてエルサレムばかりでなく、ユダヤとサマリアの全土で、また地の果てに至るまで私の承認となる。これが最後のメッセージですね。So he told them they were going to receive power after they received this Holy Spirit, this power from on h i g this comforter. で、まあ、最後のメッセージが、力まさに精霊が来た時、これが最後のイエス様のメッセージだと。そして証人となると。So we are to be witnesses, but not just with word, but in power. 私たちがまさに証人となるべきであり、それはただ言葉だけではなく、その力を持って証人となる。So we go around and teach people about the Holy Spirit and about that power and how it operates in your life. And that's how we believe we are witnesses unto Him by operating what He has given us freely. まあ、その力を持って、その力でイエス様の御業を明かしすることが、まさにそれが。God bless you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm so happy that God opened the door for me to come in Japan and meet the wonderful believers of Japan. And all the believers of India and Nepal, they send their love and greetings to you. When I was in Japan in 2005, I, I was in Nagoya and worked there for six months. And you know, I met Japanese people, they have a great heart, great heart. they are meek, humble. And I saw, you know, Japanese have everything. Japanese have everything, they have to, uh, 
And in India, you know, we have God and Goddess. Uh, they have eyes, they cannot see. They can have, uh, they have ears, they cannot uh, listen. They have mouth, they cannot speak. They have feet, they have hand, they cannot walk, they cannot, you know, work for you. Or if they fall, they cannot save themselves. And Indian and Nepalese, they go and pray to them and we teach them and they cannot save themselves. How can they save you? So we began, we said, God, you send us, they have, they want to know you. So please send them to us so that we can teach them about you. Like, I, we pray, God, there are many hungry people mm -hmm. in India and Nepal, and they want to know you. But they don't know who you, who is a real God. Okay. So please send them so that we can share about you. So one day, you know, that we have a fellowship like we have same fellowship like you have. But there's only one difference in fellowship in Japan and fellowship in India. There's only one difference in fellowship in Japan today, like already in India. But you sit in chair, we sit in the floor. Like in this place, around like 150 people in New in Naples can come. So one day, you know, I would like to share one testimony with you, like small testimony. So, you know, we were in the fellowship and we were teaching. And we taught about like James 1.5. And it says, you know, if any one of you lack of wisdom, ask whom? Man? No, ask God. Well, to the Yeah, James 1, verse 5. What and he, God says, you know, why God says, you know, if any one of you lack of money, he can say lack of money. He can say lack of anything. But he said, you need to pray first for wisdom so that you know me. So we thought uh, to the fellowship, like, you can ask God anything. You know, God can give you. And there was a lady, uh, you know, she hasn't have a husband, and she uh, she's a young lady, has a boy, two years old, and has a boy for four years old, and she was very poor, and uh, she has no money, no business, and uh, she needs, you know, milk for their kids because she cannot feed them, but and no money to buy the milk. So she went back home and she said, God, today I came to know who, who are you. And I was pray I was asking my God and Goddess, they are not giving me anything. If you are a living God, so today you I read in your word that if you have lack of wisdom, ask God. But I have wisdom, but I need a cow. And I have no money to buy a cow. 
because the cow gets milk, so she can feed them. まあ、その女性がその、まあ、彼の,その交わりの中に来て、まあ、本当の神様を今日私は知ったで家に帰,帰ってですねもう私は今日あなたが大体誰,誰であるかっていうのを本当に今日知りましたでこの聖書にあるようにあなたを求めるのを与えてくださいますって言ってますで私はこの見る子買うお金がないから私はその牛牛をあの与えてくださいというふうにこう祈った so she prayed and she slept. で、まあ、祈って牛が欲しいミルクが欲しいで祈って寝ましたインドではあの山,特に山とかとそのガスの供給ラインとかそういうのが全くないので、まあ、朝の日課としてまず山の中に森の中に行って。その枯れ木とかを集めて薪を集めてそれで料理をするっていうのがインド人の日常生活なんですね。そうですね。山の中にはそのトラとかクマが住んでいるのでたまにその人を襲って死んでしまうっていう事件も起きる本当に危険な場所なんですね。So she went to the jungle and collected sticks, and it was like dark, like 4 or 5 p.m. She was coming back, and she found her neighbor is going to a jungle in the, e- in the evening, which is very dangerous. And he was not by himself, he has a cow with him. And, and then he, she met him on the way to the jungle. The man is on the Yuna, that's the next one of the jungle that they took in it. That is, no, we should take out the one of the massive jungle in Hyrodos. Monday, I'm a Yuna, the crap on the Yuna. I feed her every day, you know, spending money, and she doesn't give milk. So I'm going to throw him in the jungle and the tiger eat her. <笑>あのまあその石を買った買ったはいいけど全くその父を出さないからもうお金の無駄遣いだからもうまさにもうトトラに食べさせちゃうと捨てようと思って連れてきたんだって言った。<笑> so he was very angry and she said, if you don't mind, can you give me this cow? And yeah. I'll I'll feed her. であの彼女がもうそんなことするもしよかったらその塩を足してくださいませんかって聞いたんですね。Mm-hmm. So then he said, Are you sure? And when、uh, when I give you cow, don't give me back. でまあその男にも本当に怒ったんで、もう父を出さないんでね。もうだからほほ本当にあの返さないでよっていうふうに。<笑><笑> so, so he vowed. He said, No, you have to promise me you don't, because he knew if she bring him back, then he has to feed him, spend money, and she doesn't give milk. まあもう本当かその彼はそのね。今まで餌をばっか与えたけど、父を出さないんで、もっと怒ったお金無駄遣い、うん。だから絶対私に返さないでくださいっていう約束をした。そ、う、れ、ん、<笑> she, she brought the cow and in the morning she get up, she thought she's going to give milk. So she tried to take milk, but the cow didn't give the milk. で、まあその実際持って帰って、あのその翌朝ちょっとこう父を絞ってみた。でもやっぱ出なかったね。And then remember, you know, and then she said, oh, I have God. You know, I'm going to pray for my, but God can heal us. He can heal my, he can heal the cow. So he put his hand and said, I don't know who is stopping the cow to give milk. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up. Then, so, the chicken are denied. Then, so, the cow is a, ah, but I am a man who is still in the world. Then, so, the cow is a, so, the chicken are denied. You know, there are some chicken are, some Monday, yes, he is a man who 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 is a man. でその祈った後に家の中に戻ってその壺というかその器を持ってこの下に置いて絞り始めてそしたらミルクが出始めた。But the pot was small. It was full in two minutes. でまあすごいちっちゃな器だったんでもう2分ぐらいしたらもう満杯になる。And she brought a big bucket and poured again. で今度大きなバケツを持ってきた。Again the bucket was full. でもバケツをまたいっぱい満たされました。And then you know she feed her pigs. And she sell the milk and got money. で今度は子供にミルクを与えるだけじゃなくてそれを売ってお金を得ることもできました。Uh-huh. And she got milk twice in a day. 
You know, sometimes we've been in the church, but when you don't know even the person who was seated near to you. あの、たまに教会行ってね、あの、隣に座ってるの誰かっていうことを知らないっていうことを状況を頭にかけるんですね。そう、よく聞かれるんだ。Who Ah, uh, I thank God that I'm in Japan. I thank God that I'm in Japan. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm so humbled to find people in Japan you love God so much. You are so humbled to God. Amen. I thank God for Robert and Mom because they are the one who made us to come and meet you people here. We are working with them uh, to awaken the church, to tell the church that you are able to do things. The moment you receive Christ, you have everything. We, we are not only in Japan, but we are traveling the whole world, the whole nations, to awaken them so that they can come to the knowledge, to understand the one whom they believe. I have nine children. And, uh, um, we, I, we have me and my wife, we have four hundred children, we are taking care of them. We get the children from the street, we get the children from the communities whereby some of them they have their parents but they are not able to, you know, to give them what is needed. Some of them they have single parents. So we bring them together, we disciple them, we nurture them in the word of God, we teach them, uh, we provide everything to them by the grace of the Lord. まあ、私たちはその例えば、まあ、親の子供はね、いろいろ捨てられたりもするので、それでちょっと子供を連れてきたり、まあ、例えば子供、親がいてもその食事を与えられない、そういう方の子供をあの自分のところに連れてきて、
Your work is to apply that power in the situation you are in. To speak it out in the challenge you are in. Hallelujah. Wave to me, hallelujah. Just do like this, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 61. Let me read it just two minutes because we need our daddy to speak to us. Isaiah 61. Yeah, from verse 1. You can read it. Verse 1? Yeah, from verse 1. Just read it quick so that we can read okay. it. Okay. 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 You can read even two. The Spirit of the Lord, Savior Lord, is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor and to set me to set meaning to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. The moment you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you possess his spirit and his power. Hallelujah. You are after receiving his spirit or his power, it does not mean that everything is now finished. You have to come up, speak that power, walk in that power. Believe in that power, things will work out. We are here to proclaim the good news that you are not sick, but you are healed in the name of Jesus. You are not sick, but you are healed in the name of Jesus. Sick. Yes, you are not sick. Sick. Ah, ah sick. Ah, well, Miyasa, kara, ano, koko de, sono, yama, o, yama inar, tame na te, yama ias gawa nan desu. He said that to bind up the broken hearted. If you are here, you have sorrows in your heart. The Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here to bind up, to encourage you, to give you strength in the name of Jesus. Somebody say Amen. Amen. Say Hallelujah. Okay, let me summarize. Then he said that uh, to release from, you know, to proclaim freedom for the captives, to release from darkness for the prisoners. I don't know which type of prison you are in. Maybe you have a sickness, maybe you have a battle which is running in your life, maybe you don't have peace in your marriage. That is a prison we are talking about. You have power, you have the authority to speak to that mountain, to speak to that prison, to go out of you because 
you will remain free. Hallelujah. Number two, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This is the year of the Lord's favor. You are favored in the place of work. You are favored in this community. You are favored in whatever you touch by your hands. You are favored because this is the year of the Lord. If you came in the church when you were sick, you are going out when no more sickness. If you came in the church, you just said, let me just go and try to see if I, it will work. My friend, build your faith in the Lord. Faith comes by hearing. Healing comes by faith. Whatever you build your faith on, that is what will come. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Just go out when you speak that. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. No more sickness, no more lack, no more poverty, no more fear. The reason why? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. God bless you so much. We love you. We are going to come back again. For many days in Jesus' name. Let us welcome our dad to speak to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Give him a mad hand clap. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> My brother from Uganda. <laughs> God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm very thankful to be here today. Thank you for opening your hearts, your homes, and your church. Thank you for walking, welcoming us here today. I may have only 20, 30 minutes to share with you. I came thousands of miles to stand in front of you today. I'm praying that I will say something important. Mm. Important, significant, you know. This is my only opportunity, at least on this trip, my own, maybe my only opportunity to speak to you, so I want to speak what God once spoken. So we know that God is our Heavenly Father. We are His children. We have confessed Jesus as our Lord and He put His seed of Christ in us, Holy Spirit in us. That's why we are His children. We are God's children. It's a wonderful life, a, a life of a father with His children. We are His children. He's our Heavenly Father. And he loves us. Now when we when the church when the, the church believers come together, we can hear a message or messages from God. We have the Holy Spirit, we all have the Holy Spirit inside us. We can bring it forth in like you will see a message from God. We can hear a message from God. Uh, Patty, will you come up here, please? Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to have my wife, Patty, give a word of prophecy, to give a prophecy. This comes from the Holy Spirit. We all can do this, but she's going to bring a message from God, a word of prophecy. So listen carefully to the message. I am your father and I am your God. Trust in me at all times, for I have given you precious promises. And I have given of my son, Jesus Christ. That you might have life and walk with me. I long to talk to you. So take time to talk to me. And know that my love never ends for you. It burns as bright as the sun. Don't have fear. But just look to me. And I will bring to pass the desires of your heart. Amen. Thank you. Ashish, can you do sometimes a church? I will also have Ashish give a message of speaking in tongues and interpretation. I'm your God and I'm always with you. I give you good health. I give you good wealth. Just ask me. And don't look here and there. And I'm your father and I'm always with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we know. Uh, let, let me read a verse in the Bible. Let's see here. My wonderful brother Frederick started the, started the message already. <laughs> In Acts chapter 1. And my wife started the message already also. <laughs> now, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. This is the last thing that Jesus says while he's here on earth before he ascends up into heaven. This is the last words Jesus ever speaks to his disciples before he ascends up into heaven, so they're very important. So let's let's see what what was an important message he gave. Let's see what it says. Let's we'll read it. It says, "But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth." So we know that we he we know he said he was going they were going to receive power. He told the twelve disciples to go to Jerusalem and wait because they were going to receive power, the power of the Holy Spirit. And then the next verse says he while they were watching him he ascended up into heaven. So these were his last words on earth.
So, ten days later, they received the Holy Spirit. God poured it out. It's called the Day of Pentecost. God poured it out, and they received it, and they all spoke in tongues. That was the proof they had the power because they spoke in tongues, the twelve apostles did. The word tongue means unknown language. So when the Christian believer speaks in tongues, that's he's speaking an unknown language, a language he doesn't understand. I'll read verse Acts chapter 2, verse 4. It says, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. When they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the first thing they did, they began to speak in in unknown tongues, in a, in a tongue. Now, how in the world could they speak a language that they didn't understand? Well, that's impossible, but it says that the Spirit gave them the words, the utterance, the words to speak. God gave them the words to speak. This is for every Christian believer. Every Christian believer can pray with, it's also called praying with the Spirit. When you speak in tongues, it's your Spirit praying to God. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14. 14 The Apostle Paul is teaching the church about the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 14, 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? In verse 15, I will pray with the Spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. You see, Paul's explaining that now that you become a Christian, you have two ways to pray. There's two different ways that a Christian can pray. One is to pray with your understanding. Everybody, we all know how to do that one. Even the, when they pray to the gods in India, they pray with their understanding. They pray to the statue, and the statue falls over and does nothing. <laughs> but it's, it's with your understanding, with, the, with English or Japanese. Yeah. Okay. Like, I, I will pray with my understanding right now. I, I will pray. God, I thank you for a blessing upon this church. In the name of Jesus, amen. <laughs> See, there, there is a, everybody, we all know how to pray like that. Everybody in here knows how to pray like that. <laughs> Paul says there's two, there's another way to pray. He says, I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray with the Spirit. What is it to pray with your Spirit? That's what it's called, speaking in tongues, is to pray with your Spirit. 
、まあ、これ私の例が祈っていると書かれているのは、これパールが意味するのは、これ、威厳に祈るということです。あなたが言うことは、皆さんの意見を語るとき、皆さんのうちにあるという例が祈っている。I will give an, an example of praying with the Spirit. I will pray with the Spirit right now and you can watch and see how it works. Eriva Shanta, Palarava Shan, Zoko Palarava Shan, say Palarava Shantan. Did you understand that? No. Did you understand? <laughs> no, that's, that's an unknown language. I don't understand the words. He didn't understand them. Probably nobody understood them, as far as I know. But see, when, when you speak, when you pray with, in Japanese, you speak in Japanese, you say your prayer to God like you normally do. When you pray in the Spirit, you speak words, but you don't understand them. They just come from the Spirit inside you. They come up from the Spirit inside you, the Holy Spirit. And you are always in control. You can start when you want to, you can stop, you can speak, or you don't want to speak, you don't speak. You are the one in control. Praying in the Spirit is not something God does, it's something you do. Speaking in tongues is not something God does, it's something you do. You do it, but God gives you the words. You work together with God, with your Heavenly Father. And when you speak in tongues, you are, it says, 1 Corinthians 14 2, what's that? You want to read that one? 14 what, What's it say? Speak, speaks to God? Yes, okay. 1 Corinthians 14 2. 第一コリントの14章の2節にありますが、威厳を語る者は人に向かってではなく、神に向かって語っています。それは誰にも分かりません。彼,彼は霊によって神経を語っているのです。It says, when you speak in tongues, you're speaking to God.You're speaking to God. 神に向かって語っていますと書かれています。Now, let me, let me ask you a given example or ask a question. あのちょっと例を出しますので、皆さんちょっとこの私の質問に答えてください。Today, if I said to you, I spoke to the Emperor of Japan yesterday, you would probably ask me, well, what did he say? You'd be excited, like, oh, what did he say? What did he say? <laughs> And then say, oh no, I, I spoke to him, he didn't speak to me, I just spoke to him. Is that right? No, that's not right. <laughs> But see, that, that's what I mean. It says, when you speak in tongues, you speak to God. That doesn't mean only one way, it's two ways. You speak, he speaks, you, you speak. It's communication with your Heavenly Father. It's communicating with your Heavenly Father. まあ、今はその天皇の例じゃないですけど、ただ自分がこう向かって話したり、何も返ってこなかったら、一方通行の,あのコミュニケーション、まあ、コミュニケーションではないですね。でも、この意味で、神に向かって話すっていうのは、そうではなくて、両方のコミュニケーションなんです。God speaks to you, He, you, I mean, you speak to God, God speaks to you. It's two ways, two, two ways. あの私たちは神様に語る。でも、神様も私たちに対して語ってください。OK、um,。Now, What we're going to do is we're going to all, we're going to,、um, what are we going to do? <laughs> what are we going to do? We're all going to praise God and worship God. We're all going to speak in tongues together as a group. Now, some people understand it, and maybe they know about this, they've done it a lo- maybe a, a long time, and some people it's new, they don't know anything about it. Well, well, we're all learning together. If you want to s- s- pray with the Spirit, you can, and if you don't want to, you don't have to, because you are the one that does whatever you want to do. まあ、もし、まあ、別にやりたくなければ、あの口を閉じていただいてもいいし、やりたければ、ま
So, um, but when when I, I will I I'm going to have everyone stand and then I will pray and then we'll all speak in tongues together to practice. This is like a practice session because we need to practice the things of God. We need to practice the things with the Holy Spirit. Okay, good. Now, um, if you if if you are new, if you've never spoken in tongues before, when I say speak in tongues, you just start speaking, but you don't speak Japanese. You want to ask what? Huh? Everybody speaking in Taiwan? I will in a minute. I will in a minute. I'll ask you in a minute, but when I say speak in tongues, in a, in a minute, then um, you just start speaking. You don't speak Japanese, you don't speak English. You speak the word, God will give you the words to your spirit, you just speak them out. The Apostle Paul said, I want all the people to speak in tongues. It's for every Christian, every Christian, in every nation, every church, everywhere. It's for all Christians, this is for. First Corinthians 14, 5, so I would you all speak in tongues? Yes, I explained. Okay, okay, good. Okay. Okay. I'm going to pray, then we'll all speak. I've helped many, many, many churches. I've done the same thing. It's it's very simple, it's nothing difficult. <laughs> The only thing we need to understand is what is our part. We open our mouth and start speaking. God will give us the wonderful praise words. He'll give us the words to speak. Okay. Heavenly Father, I pray for each and every person here. I thank you that you already filled them with your Holy Spirit. I thank you that when we when we speak when we start speaking and praising you that you give all the people the words to speak. Just fill them, fill them, Heavenly Father, fill them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, everybody, speak in tongues, out loud. Okay, stop, stop, stop. That's good, that's good, wonderful. Let's give yourself a little hand there. But see, if you can speak one word, you can speak a thousand words. Because you have the power. If you have the power to speak one word, you can speak five words, ten words, a thousand words. And why, remember, why would a person want to do this? Because you're in communication with your Heavenly Father, you draw closer to your Heavenly Father. It's a wonderful way to be close to your Heavenly Father. It's a one when you understand it more, you'll see it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful blessing in your life. It's the proof that you're a Christian. It's you have the proof. I mean, it's proof, and, and it's you know. 
Okay, we'll speak in tongues and practice one more time. Okay, everybody speak in tongues. Yeah. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Okay, thank you. God bless you. You can sit down. You can sit down. God bless you. Thank you, everyone. That's great. Now, um, when I'm teaching, I'm, I'm looking out at the people, and uh, some people are shaking their head like they, they understand. In fact, um, if, you, if you need help afterwards, if you need help after the meeting, you can ask me or you can ask this wonderful woman right here. She understands what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> she has a good understanding. She'll help. She'll help. She, she's just radiating. She just shines, this woman right here. Your face just is like a light. God bless, God bless you. Well, um, we know we have the Holy Spirit inside. It's a lot of power. Jesus said you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes inside you. It's a power to do many different things. We've seen from the Bible that you can speak to God and pray in the Spirit and communicate with your Heavenly Father, you can speak in tongues. That's one thing you can do. My wife brought a word of prophecy that comes from the Holy Spirit, very similar, but and everybody saw that. Everybody here can do that. Everybody here can prophesy. As she spoke in tongues and interpreted and brought a message, every person in here can do that. We all have the, Holy, the same Holy Spirit. You can do that. He can do that. Every person is the same. You, you only have to understand what you're supposed to do. How, what am I, how do I do it? That's all you need to understand. I wrote a little booklet called Interpretation of Tongues. This is not this topic is not very understood in the in the Christian church today. It's very, very it just doesn't even hardly exist in the Christian church today. The, the book the book is in yeah, in fact <laughs> In the United States, you can go to 500 churches Sunday morning, you'll never hear interpretation of tongues. People just don't, don't know about it very much. And even worse, in, in Japan, nobody knows more or less over here. You know? Well, God wants it back in the church. He had me wrote, write a little book on it. and. I will, unfortunately, it's in English. I will give you one if you'd like, but in several months we want to translate them to Japanese, you know? I was here in Japan last June and July. Um, I was in. Uh, where did we start from? I was in uh, Osaka. <laughs> And anyway, I took the bullet train from Osaka to Sapporo. Jay was with me, but he, he flew the airplane. It was cheaper and faster. He flew in an airplane. <laughs> so I rode the plane, the train, the, the uh, Shinkansen, because I had the bullet, the, the pass, but he, he took the plane. So I was on the on the train for six hours. I really couldn't talk to anybody because I don't speak Japanese. 
その6時間ぐらい乗ったんですけど誰日本語喋れないんで誰ともコミュニケーションできない<笑><笑> So God gave him the idea why don't you write a book? で、マカネさんはじゃあそんな暇だったら本書いたらっていうふうに So I, I wrote this book on the, on the bullet train when I was going to Sapporo. This was almost like a Japanese book or something. <laughs> I do have one book that's written by my friend about the Holy Spirit, and it is in Japanese. I have three or four, but、um, if someone would like one, they could have one. And、um, I think.、Uh, Pastor Yumi, Yumi Sensei is going to get like 50 more books. She'll probably have more. So we're, we're trying to get more study materials, you know? Okay, let's talk about healing the sick. まあ、ちょっと一回トピック変えて、今度の癒しの部分にちょっとお話を少し進めたいと思います。Remember, Jesus started his ministry and he called 12 disciples to be with him and to preach the gospel. Remember the 12 disciples? 皆さん、まあ、12弟子で皆さんご存知だと思うんですが、あのいろいろなあの、まあ、癒しのこととか、いろいろこう教育、訓練者の接種書かれていますね。And they were with him and they saw him do miracles, heal the sick. Preach, cast out devils, they, they followed him around, they saw everything that he did. So in, in Matthew chapter 10, they've been with Jesus about, about two to three months, two to three months. When this record came to pass here. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. イエスは十二人の弟子を呼び寄せ、汚れた霊に対する剣能をお授けになった。汚れた霊を追い出し、あらゆる病気や患いを癒すためであった。And they were, they were, we would call them baby Christians. They were new, they, you know, they weren't, they were new, and they were, you know, they, they'd only been around for about two to three months. They were new people, so to speak. あのまさにこの十二弟子のこの今の状況っていうのは、全くこう、癒しとか全く新しい状態、まさにこうクリスチャンとしてもその、もう赤子、まあ、ベイビークリスチャンというか、全く初心者のような状況ですね。Because some people think,、um, oh, healing the sick, that's for the pastor, that's for the person that knows more, that's per- the person that studied at the university, but no, it's, it's for everybody, it's for everybody. まあ、あの人によっては、その癒しとかになると、それ牧師がするものとか、すごい勉強を積んだ人、大学を出た人とか、まあそういう。何か特別な人だと思いがちですが、これはそうではなくて、すべての人に与えられているものなんです。And let's read verse 7. 10章の7節をちょっと読んでみます。He's giving them instructions. あの、まあ、ちょっとインストラクションを与えているところです。What to do? And he says, As you go, preach, say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand.7 節、行って天の国は近づいたと述べ伝えなさい。He says, Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. And I think it's in Luke, it's a, it tells the same story. It says they went out, they went everywhere, healing the sick and preaching the gospel. So he gave them power and authority against all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. He's given you the same power and authority because you have Christ in you, you have the Holy Spirit. That's what Frederick was telling us that we have power and we have authority. We need to speak with authority. 
言ったのにこれがその強調したいと同じ,同じ権威と力が与えられているんです。Now, You have to look very carefully, and if you look carefully, you'll see that Jesus did not tell his disciples to pray for the sick. He told his disciples to heal the sick. There's a difference. It's one thing to pray for a sick person, it's another to heal a sick person.、うん、I think I'm speaking too long today, we'll have to hurry up. <笑> Let's look at Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Well, I'm sorry, Acts,、uh, maybe it's 8. Let's see. Let me see. Uh, yeah, Philip. Okay, Acts chapter 8. It says Acts chapter 8, verse 5. It says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Verse 7 For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many that were taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. So Philip went down the city of Samaria and he started preaching. He started telling people about Jesus Christ. And it says, all the people listened to him. They listened to him very carefully. Wouldn't you like people to listen to you very carefully when you teach about Jesus Christ or preach? Wouldn't you like for people to listen to you when you preach? Because that's what happened to Philip. Why, why did the people listen to Philip? The Bible tells you because they heard and saw the miracles which Philip did. Now, let me ask you a question Who did the miracles? <coughs> because some people say, Oh, I don't, I don't do the healing, God does the healing. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, Philip did the miracles. They listened to Philip because they saw the miracles which he, Philip, did. So, how, Philip did the miracles, but how did he do them? Well, he did them, of course, because of the Holy Spirit inside him. He, he operated the power of God. You and I, we can't do miracles with our own power or ability. We can't heal people. We can't do that. That's impossible. But we have the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the power comes out of us, and that does bring healing to people. Um, What, what's, your, what's your name? What is it? Himiki san. Himiki. Okay. If you are going to see the power of God come out, you have to do the miracles. You have to learn to do miracles.
We all have the power inside us. If it's going to come out, you have to learn to do miracles. You, you three. Uh, everybody here. Let me give an example. Let's say you have a, like a saw to saw a board, you know? You have a saw and a piece of wood. You take the saw and you saw the piece of wood in half. Okay, who cut the wood in half? Was it the saw or was it the person? Well, it was both, wasn't it? It was both worked together, right? If you're going to see miracles happen, if you're going to heal the sick, you have to learn to use the power of God. You have to learn to do something. Let's say you're, you're a Christian, let's say you know you have the power of God, you know that it's, it's a power that can do miracles. And you could say, you'd say, well, I'm, I'm just going to go down to the train station where it's busy, and I'm going to sit there and I'm going to wait until some miracle happens. You're going to be waiting a long time, no miracles are going to happen. <laughs> you have to learn what to do. You have to learn what to do. You have to do something. And it's not that hard. It's very it's not very hard. It's not difficult either. The the main way the power of God see, we have the power of God in us, but we want it to come out. We don't want it just hiding inside. We want it to come out and change the world, heal the sick, help people. We want the power of God to come out. It's great that we have the Holy Spirit inside us. We want it to come out and change the world and do miracles and bring deliverance to God's people. The, the main way it comes out is by, by you, you have to, here, let me have, let me have to say this here. <clears throat> It says he gave them power and authority against all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Let's look at Mark 11, chapter 20, Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Yeah, Mark chapter 11, verse 23. This is a wonderful key right here to see miracles. You want to see miracles? This is the key right here. I, I just talked to a woman recently. She said she had been to the Roman Catholic Church for 50 years. She'd never seen a miracle. That's not good. We want to see miracles all the time. And I know you see them in this church. I've heard the testimonies. There are miracles happening here, which is fantastic, which is great, but we want more. We want more miracles. Exactly. Moto moto, Lord. Amen. In verse 23. It says, for verily, Jesus is teaching, Jesus is teaching the disciples how to pray and to see miracles happen. He says, verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Verse 24, Therefore I say unto you, What things wherever you desire, when you pray, believeth you receive them, and you shall have them. 
。二十四節だから言っておく、祈り求めるものはすべてすでに得られたと信じなさい。そうすればその通りになる。You see, it says, when you pray, he's teaching them how to pray. <笑>ここでどのように祈るかというのを教えています。Do you know how to pray? Do you know how to pray with the power of God coming out of you? どのようにその神の力を表すか、皆さん。Remember, you have to do something if you want to see the miracle at the train station? Well, this is it. <laughs> it says, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And he was pointing to a mountain out there. You have to speak to the mountain. You have to speak to the problem. You have to speak to the sickness or disease. You speak to it and it will obey you. Jesus, when, when Jesus saw sick people, he never prayed and asked God to please heal the sick person. He never did that. You can look through the whole Bible. He never prayed for a sick person and said, God, please heal this person. Please do something for them. Please, God. He never said that. Never, never, never. Here's what he did. He said, Let's say she was a sick person. He says, Sickness, get out. Disease, get out. He said, Evil spirit, get out. For an example, not that she's sick, but for an example. <laughs> Or he, he spoke to the wind, he said, Peace be still. He came to the grave where Lazarus was been dead for what, four days was it?、Mm -hmm. he, came, but he had been in there for four days, and what did he say? Oh God, please, please get Lazarus up. Did he, did he say that? No, he said, Lazarus, come forth. He gave a command. You people need to grow up and start giving commands. You command the problem to go, you command the sickness to go, you command things to change. You command the blessing of God to come. <laughs> Now we're not commanding God. We don't command, give Him commands. He's, he's the boss and we're, we're the person. <laughs> But we speak to the situations. We speak to the problem. We said, be healed or whatever, whatever it needs. We, we tell it what to do. We tell it what to do. You've got to realize you have the power and the authority and the ability to tell, to command the problem to go. Nobody in here are beggars. We are not beggars.、No. God's children are never beggars. He doesn't. He, we're not beggars. We don't come to God and say, Oh God, please, 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 please do something, God. We need help. Please help us. Please do something, God. Please, please, please. We don't do that. And sometimes this is what has happened in the church. Sometimes we think, I will ask God and I will get many other people. Maybe if I get. 50 or 100 people all kind of asking or begging God, maybe, maybe, maybe God will do something.、ね、that's not the way. That's not the best way. You just need one person to stand, believe, and command the situation to change, which is you. Here, here, let me give an example, and I might, I might 
we might finish up pretty soon. I keep looking for the clock. <laughs> That's over there. <laughs> okay. But let's say you have like you have a wonderful church here. Let's say one of your church members is sick in the hospital. For an example. And you know this church member, they're a wonderful person, and you've loved them for many years, so you go visit them in the hospital. There they are, they're laying in the hospital bed, they're sick. And you are a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit, you are going to help this person. That's why you came to pray or to do something, right? So you walk into the hospital room. There's your friend in bed sick. And this is what many times, which I've done, I've done this the same thing for years. This is what this is what the Christians usually do, and which I did for years. God, here's my friend, sick, my friend is sick here. God, please, please, God, please heal this person because they're a wonderful person. We love them, we want them back in church. Please do something, God. I prayed that way for many years. I don't know if I ever saw a miracle, I can't remember. But, but anyway, um, but you know what God says, God's listening, you know what he would say? You know what he would say? He'd say, why are you asking me to heal this person? I told you to do it. He's waiting for you to do it. Well, what do you mean? Well, I mean, how, what, do you, what do you mean? How does that work? You walk in with power and authority because you have Christ in you. You say, diabetes, get out. Cancer, get out. Body be healed. Pain, get out. You walk with power and authority because you have Christ in you. You're not a weak person. Maybe you, you, maybe you thought you were last week, but I'm telling you, you're not a weak person. You are a person that's full, full, full of the power of God. You'll never get any more power, power than you already have. You'll never, God will never give you any more, ever. It's already in here. We just want it to come out. We don't want it to hide in there. We want it to come out and bring deliverance to God's people. God is waiting for you to go to his people or to any people, speak and command healing, command their bodies to be healed, and the power of God will come. So let's all rise up and act like sons and daughters of God. We're not like a servant or employee. It's not like we're going to be fired if we, if we don't do a good job or something. We're sons, we're daughters. If you, if, if you were the son of the president, let's say, you come in, you're, 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 you're the son of the president, you're confident. <laughs> the emperor, whoever. We're not like, oh, no. Don't look at me, please. No, we're like, not because we're special, because we have something special inside us. We have Christ in us. Christ in us. Christ in us. Somebody said we, we walk down one side of the street like we own this side of the street. And we are thinking of buying the other side. That's our attitude. 
You mean you find? You well, but the attitude we have is when we walk down the street, it's like we own this side, and we're thinking of buying the other side of the street. We're confident. Oh, that's a good Maybe it's not a good example. Well, I, don't I don't listen to me. Okay. <laughs> what if you go into a place and you own it? Yeah, you walk you walk into some place and you're the owner and you're thinking of buying the place. In other words, we we go in with an attitude of that we're a powerful person. We are powerful people because we have the power of God in us. Okay, how many people here need prayer today? Anybody need prayer? Anybody need a miracle? Anybody need God to do anything? She does. One person. <laughs> Two people. <laughs> everybody. Probably everybody. Usually it's everybody. I need a I need some miracles. <laughs> what we're all gonna do, since you have Christ in you, you have the power of God in you, we're all gonna pray for each other. I'm not the one with the great power of God, or he's not the one. We all have the same power of God in us. We all have the same power. So in, in, a, in a few minutes, in, in two or three minutes, I'll have you stand up and pray for each other. And what you do is you, you, let's say, for example, I'm going to pray for this woman, for an example. I would say, okay, uh, what would you like God to do? Then she says, well, I have this problem, or I have this need, or, you know, she would tell what, what she would like God to do, right? And then you speak with authority. You say, you speak to the problem. You tell it, tell it to go, or you, you speak with authority. It's kind of, you have to kind of learn to do it. I had to learn because normally you say, God, thank you for healing this person, or please heal this person. That's the normal way we all pray. I prayed for years, and maybe we still do sometimes. Uh, wait. Sickness be gone, pain be gone, finances come, poverty be gone, whatever it is, you just speak to it and tell it what to do in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. So no beggars in here today. We all have authority. We're all filled with the power of God. Okay, so um, I want you all to stand up and find a partner. Find somebody to, to pray with or pray for. And you, you've got the power of God like me or like anybody else. We all have the same power of God. Does everyone have a, a partner?